What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about the where clause and this video is going to be everything that you need and nothing that you don't need. The where clause is another one of those uh, SQL commands that is one of the most important and one of the most common that you're ever going to see in your career as a software developer or an analyst. And it's another one of those videos that if you don't pay attention to any of my other videos, make sure you watch the one on select, make sure you watch the one on where, make sure you watch the video on joins, and that's all you're going to need. And I'm going to show you all the the uh, where um, combinations that you need, and I'm not gonna show you like any of the other ones that are kind of just, you know, good to know. These are all things like you have, to, you need to know these uh, as a software developer or de data analyst, but, uh, nonetheless, let's actually get in here and let's just actually um, talk about what the where clause is. So it's it just means where. And the where clause is you're just filtering. It's almost like you're making your own little search engine for your data. Whenever you think where, think that you're either filtering or searching data. You're almost like Google in terms of your inputting operators and logic in order to get certain types of data back with the select clause you're trying to get all your data back but with the where clause you're only returning data that you want and it's very simple first part of the where clause after the where is you're going to search by column this is an actual sql this is just kind of uh notes that i'm showing you and then you're going to have some type of logical operator right here then you're gonna have some type of value or like what you are actually searching for. So column, you're going to actually be searching your column. So store ID, actually let's get um, a better table here. This table is just numbers. We're actually gonna wanna sort something that actually has um, some data in it besides keys and quantity. So let's go here right click on sales uh if you don't have this and you want this database it's a dummy database and i've got a video just look for my video on how to to uh make a dummy database but you could do this on any type of data that you want to in fact i highly recommend that you do this on some type of data of your own and you don't copy it word for word because you learn more that way so i'm just going to kind of i'm just going to copy this right here and you don't have to write this out this is just kind of logical notes so I'm going to go in here and this is um, actually, let's do customers. Great. Th this is a lot better. So right click on sales, go to select top 1000 rows and go to customers and it'll automatically spit out a select statement for us. So if you don't know what a select statement is, you're going to need to learn that first before you watch this because th these videos are kind of building on each other. So you don't know what select or from is go watch that video and then come back to this one real quick but so we're gonna just this i'm just gonna paste that back in here and you don't even need to, like i said you don't need to type this down so column whenever you do a where clause you're gonna do a column first so you have to specify where you are doing your filter and for this one let's just say we want to filter by the state like that so that would be the very first one. That's the very first thing that you put in there. You're going to put your column. Then you're going to put your logical operator. If you don't even want to um, copy what I'm doing, what you can do is you can just type in SQL operators in Google and you can kind of just make your own operator. In fact, I highly encourage you to. You don't, ha you don't ex have to do this. You could just follow what I'm gonna show you word for word, but it would behoove you to kind of just maybe build your own word clause because you'll learn more that way. But you don't, like I said, you don't have to, but this is basically what I go off of. And sometimes I will be, you know, I'm going to try and get you to think like a developer. Like you don't want to memorize SQL. You want to kind of be able to build your own. And this is how I do it. So whenever I'm using a where and I need to go to like my logical operator, I just go down here and I'm like, Hmm, Let's see here, SQL comparison operators. I could do an equals, I could do a greater than, I could do a less than, I could do one of these right here. So probably the most common one 
is going to be your equals. So we'll just toss in an equals. So we're going to we're going to sort our state column and this is the most common one that you'll actually have. Then we need to put the actual value. Makes sense, right? We if we're going to filter something, we need to filter like some kind of value. So let's go in here and let's filter all of the results by and why. So in this case, we're going to go into our customers sales customers table and we're going to actually filter the state by New York. We're going to find all of the uh, people in our database that are from New York. Essentially, that's what we're doing. And that's it. All we had to do was just type in the column. We had to type in some equals operator and then we typed in New York. This is by far the most common that you'll ever use. And if you're working, you're gonna be using this a lot because sometimes, you know, if data is not displaying correctly in your app or your web application, you're gonna to have to go in and search by um, more commonly, it would be like the ID. So let's just say we had a customer ID and we needed to find the specific one because we wanted to see all the data for, let's say Deborah. Let's say Deborah's, we pulled up Deborah's account and for some reason Deborah's account is not displaying correctly. What we would do is we would go in and we would just find Deborah, just like that. And then Deborah's name and we wouldn't have to search individually for each one because when you work in a production database, these things are gonna have like millions of rows and you can't, it would be impossible for you to actually search for Deborah individually like that. So let's just uh, go on to the next most common, if that's, <laughs> that's a word, the next most common is the not equals. And programming not equals usually looks like this. Um, I don't think that that's actually right. It's SQLs giving saying that that is correct logic, but I don't think that actually is. This is actually a not equal. So everybody that is not equal to one is going to show up for this one. And we run it and as you can see, this not equals is showing everybody except for Deborah who has a customer ID of one. And this is way too strict. A lot of times you're going to have to um, sort by all types of other things. You're This is by far the most common, but you have to think too, you're gonna be filtering by all other types. So let's talk about maybe making it a little, we're going to make it a little less strict. So let's say where, and not only can you do stuff like, equals but you can also do just like in programming if you are used to maybe python or if you come from a programming background you can have an and you can have this which is an or you can do um i think there's other there's other types as well too but uh the other most common logical operator is going to be an and so the customer id is not equal to one and the state is equal to California. So that is going to be an, uh, another incredibly, incredibly common way to filter. And going to see this, this is probably the most second common way of sorting data or uh, filtering data. So we're checking, so we're basically saying filter it by everything that is not one. And we're, we also want the state to be California. Um, you could even go more. You could uh, you could say and the zip code, or uh, let's see here, and the city is equal to San Diego. And it doesn't have to be case sensitive in SQL. It uh, can be, you could either go like this or it could be lowercase as well too, but either way, it's going to search all San Diego. So essentially we're saying here, everybody who is not Deborah, AKA customer ID one, who lives in the state of California and lives in the state of San Diego. And let's see, I don't even, I've never ran this query before, so I have no idea if this is even going to be true. And we have uh, tons of results because it makes sense. Um, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to live in San Diego. 
So let's say also customer ID or 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 just like that. So the or clause is going to be a lot different from the and clause. The and clause is saying it has to be this. It has to be California. It has to be San Diego. But the or clause is going to be more ambiguous because you're just saying it can be not Deborah or it can be in California or it can be in San Diego. And that's going to show a lot more results because it's less restrictive. You're just saying like, it doesn't have to be, but it has to meet these constraints. It doesn't have to be, but it could also be San Diego. And once again, those are going to be incredibly common just as they are in programming as well. So one other thing that you, you're going to have to worry about is the precedence of the actual, uh, the, the precedence. And you may have seen stuff like PEMDAS, so here, I'll just show you another thing that you are going to have to realize is that and comes before or in precedence. And many times if you have these really long chains, so if we have customer ID is not equal to one and the city is equal to San Diego. So customer ID and the city, or you need to put these parentheses around it. Otherwise, the uh, pre you will have to worry about the precedent. So if you are making these really long and ors and you're noticing that they're not showing up correctly, it's because the you may be um, having the precedence, the uh, order of precedence wrong. And the way that you force SQL into executing the type of query or the type of order that you want to is going to be through using parentheses. So if you're noticing, if you have like a really long chain of and or ors, you want to check, you want to force the actual parentheses to execute in the way that you want it to. Otherwise you, you'll get all of these. So let's see here. And the street or the phone is equal to null. I'm, I'm noticing here we have like a lot of nulls. And phone is not null. So what it's going to do here is it's going to evaluate this one first or is not null. So if this one does not evaluate to true, it will evaluate the or or the phone is not null. And this isn't probably the most realistic example, but I hope it just drives the point home that whenever you're using all these ands or ors, you just have to realize that the and is first uh, or and the or is going to come after. And if it's not evaluating the right way that you want to, and it's, or maybe it's evaluating like this. So if it's just evaluating or city is like this, that's when you want to put your parentheses in there so that it evaluates in the way that you want to. Otherwise you'll get crazy evaluations and you won't know what's going on. So that is going to be the majority of how you're going to chain all these where clauses together. But I'm also going to give you some very real world tips for when you're actually trying to search for stuff and you can't find stuff. So let's just say you're searching for cities or you're searching, let's just do phone numbers actually. I think phone numbers is actually, you want to search for phone numbers and you want to search for phones in a, you want to search for a particular type of phone number. What you would do is you would more than likely use a like operator and put it into the parentheses like this. It's almost like a wildcard statement. So you want, if so let's say you're searching for phone numbers and you want, to search for somebody's phone number that fits a particular type of, uh, you, you're trying to search for a particular type of phone number. And a good, probably the best way is to have the like, and then you have these things called wildcards. So let's say we're going to search for Willie May, and we're searching for Willie May's phone number of 246 
two four six eight three seven five and we just want you to search for the, the whole entire database for this guy's phone number that's what you would do you would have the wildcard statements and basically this wildcard statement is saying anywhere within this column search for this phone number and if anything within that phone number actually matches it show it and that's willie willie may's phone number there's also other types of wild cards that you could use as well too let's just say it starts with a two so this would be um let's search for first name and we want to find every single first name that starts with a w or a capital w and Ha just starts with a capital W and that's how you would do it right there. That's basically the wild cards way of saying everything that starts with a W show it. And every single first name that starts with the W is going to show that first like statement. And you can also do it the other way around. So everything that ends with an E show it. And that's pretty much it. The last thing, and this is a very common one, and this is definitely one that you're going to want to know is you're going to want to search for is not null. So whenever you're searching for database, whenever you're searching through a database, a lot of times columns will allow you to have nulls. And if you what if you are searching through stuff, a lot of times you don't want the nulls. So let's just say you're going to select all of these rows and you're gonna show all the phone numbers that are not null. So we have like a bunch of people who don't have phone numbers here. And that's what you would do. You would just type in where is not null and it's going to give you all, it's going to clean up all that data and it's going to make it look a lot, a lot better. And it's not going to show all those nulls in there and make it look like doo doo. So uh, the very last one is whenever you're searching by dates, just remember that this, this uh, table doesn't have any dates and there's no actual dates in this database for some reason, but uh, important part is like whenever you want to search by dates, you don't really have to get like too complicated about it. You could just do one, 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 you know, 2011 like that. And that's going to be, um, enough to actually show the dates for you. And SQL is going to actually show the dates and not, you know, you don't have to type in like a really complex, you know, date string or any type of fancy way to actually show dates. If you just can kind of get those first three letters in there, just like a normal date, as you would see in the United States or whichever date that you, you have, that's gonna be 99% of it. And that's really 99% of the where clause. That's pretty much all you're gonna need to know if you're a software developer or if you're some type of data analyst. And you're really not gonna have to know much more than that. If you want anything more complicated, you could just Google it. But like I said, don't get too carried away. Just know the fundamentals. And if you need anything more complex, just Google it. Anyway, hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.